For 24 hours, it's been snowing in Wistful Vista. And for 24 hours, a certain citizen has been beefing about it. <laughs> the snow has stopped now, but the certain citizen is still going strong as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Yes, sir, that's what it is. It's a big, fat, cold mess, kiddo. That's what it is. Now, McGee, a little snow won't hurt you. Come on, get your overcoat and let's take a walk. No, sir, not me. I ain't going out in that snow and get chill blains. I ain't sure where my blains are, but I'm going to stay inside and keep the chill off of them anyway. (laughs) Well, I can't understand why you dislike snow. Just look at that row of trees all draped with snow. Isn't that a charming picture? Oh, sure, real charming. Looks like a squad of tall soldiers drilling in their long underwear. (laughs) Well, now, if that's all you... Heavenly day. Look at that icicle. What icicle? Where? What icicle? Hanging from the corner of our roof. Oh, wow. It's the biggest one I've ever laid eyes on. My gosh, that is a whopper. Must be ten feet long. Easily, and big around as a telephone pole. Boy, oh, boy. I'll bet there's not another one like it in town. Or anywhere else. Boy, there's enough ice in that thing to keep your Uncle Dennis in highballs for a whole weekend. (laughs) You know, McGee, the Wistful Vista Gazette would probably like to take a picture of it. That's a remarkable icicle. Say, what an idea. A front-page picture with me standing there beside it. Trevor McGee and his giant icicle. (laughs) I thought you wouldn't go outside in the cold. Tootsie, to get my picture in the paper, I'd shinny up the North Pole in my birthday suit. (laughs) Hey, maybe they take a whole flock of pictures. I'll call the Gazette and tell them to send a photographer over. And as soon as he gets here, we'll... Hold it, company. Come in. Hi, daughter. Hi, Johnny. I don't know for you. (laughs) Hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Hi, Corny. (laughs) Come in and close the door real easy. We got a giant icicle hanging from my roof, and I don't want nothing to shake it loose. I saw that icicle. It ain't so much. I suppose you've seen bigger. Many's the time, Johnny, when I was a sweet doe up in Alaska. Isn't that a sour doe? I put sugar in mine, daughter. <laughs> and you saw bigger icicles than the one I got? Johnny, things was big up there. Uh... I mind one time I walked for three miles, and when I stopped, I was still on the same snowflake. Oh. <laughs> well, now, how could that be? Stuck to my shoe, daughter. <laughs> You want to know what I think? I don't think you were ever in Alaska at all, at all. Why, Johnny, you wound me. (laughs) Me and my partner traveled all over Alaska in a dog sled. Ah. We went from Fairbanks to Cloudbanks and from Nome clean up to Yassum. Gold we come across by accident? No, no, I don't think well, we... Well, sir, have, no. me and my partner found an Eskimo that was lost and hadn't aged for a week. Oh. We gave him some of that fat stuff. You cut off a whale. Blubber? Cried like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Out of gratitude, he told us where we could find this gold, but he warned us it wouldn't do us no good. Did you get it anyhow? Yes, but the Eskimo was right. Yeah. We took that gold back home. The government wouldn't let us spend a bit of it. Why not? The gold was so cold we couldn't thaw it out. The government said it was frozen assets. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, just look at that beautiful icicle. It's going to get our picture in tomorrow's paper. That just shows you what a little foresight can do for a guy, Molly. Foresight? Well, certainly. Remember last October when you kept harping at me day and night to clean the leaves out of the gutters? Yes, I do. They're still there, too. Right. And if I'd have cleaned them gutters out, where would the melting snow that made this icicle be now? Down the drain. That's what I mean by foresight, kiddo. <laughs> Just because I was thoughtful enough not to clean out them gutters, we got an icicle that's going to make us famous in the Wistful Vista Gazette. Hmm. When is the photographer coming? Four o'clock, they said. Well, I hope he isn't late, because in case you haven't noticed it, it's turning warmer out. What? Come in. Oh. Oh, good afternoon, Dr. Gamble. Good afternoon, my dear. And a frigid look at you, dipper mouth. (laughs) Hi, suit sack. (laughs) Loosen your girdle and relax a while, fat boy. Your hospitality overwhelms me, son, but I can't stay. Good. 
Just passing by and saw that icicle out there. That's quite a production. You betcha. It's twice your height and probably half your weight. <laughs> the Gazette is coming to take a picture of it at 4 o'clock, Doctor. 4 o'clock? Oh, that's too bad. It'll never last. What do you mean, never last? Well, the wind is from the south, my boy. That thing will fall off of there in a couple of hours. Ah, oh, I say that icicle will still be up there at 4 o'clock. You want to bet? Five bucks. It's a bet. Good, good. Just a minute, boys. There will be no gambling in this house unless the winner gives his winnings to the March of Dimes. Well, that's a good idea, Molly. Right. And walk on tiptoe until 4 o'clock, kiddo, so we don't shake the house, too, either. You know, it was so cold outside that my feet got numb. Is that all? Yeah, I'd better stamp them on the floor and restore the oh, circulation. Hey, cut that out. You big, fat cheater. <laughs> that ain't fair, and you know it. Yeah, you're right, McGee. It was the trick of a cat. <laughs> I'll go home now and be back at 4 to see who won. What time's it, kiddo? Half past 11 and our icicle is still there. <laughs> Thanks. I'm scared to look myself. You know, I believe it's getting a little colder. What's the uh, thermometer say? Ten below zero. Heavenly days. Is it that cold? No, the thermometer ain't accurate. <laughs> I put it in the refrigerator to keep my courage up. <laughs> what time is it, dearie? Quarter one and the icicle's holding tight. I'll show Doc Gamble how much he knows. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Now, take it easy closing that door. I got a bet with Doc Gamble on how long that big icicle will stay up out there. Okay. Hey, that's quite a hunk of hard water hanging there, pal. Yes, the Gazette is uh, sending a photographer out at 4 o'clock, Mr. Wilcox. Going to take a picture of it. Hey, that's a coincidence, Molly. I just left the Gazette office. Had a little hassle with the managing editor. You did? What's your hassle about, Junior? Oh, he ran a story on the weather that I didn't like. Oh? I went down and straightened him out good. Yeah? Really talked turkey, did you? No, we talked aluminum, pal. Oh. <laughs> Reynolds aluminum, to be exact. We could have guessed that. He ran a story yesterday, and I can quote it exactly, that said, The current cold spell in Wistful Vista makes it a bit difficult to heat our homes properly. And, brother, I hit the ceiling. Oh, well, that seems like a harmless statement, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah, I went into that editor and I said, are you kidding? What do you mean difficult, I said. Why, any rum-dum knows the best and most economical way to keep your house warm in the winter is to have your walls and ceiling insulated with Reynolds Aluminum Reflective Insulation. Yeah, well, them newspapers... Reynolds might... Insulation gives you more warmth with less fuel, I said, because it reflects the heat rays from your furnace back into the room where they belong, I said. Well, I'm sure... That... I lean right over his desk. Yeah. And right over his desk, and I said, look, you can personally carry home enough Reynolds aluminum insulation to put over the ceiling of a six-room house. And at a cost of only about $40, I said. So don't be saying it's hard to heat your home. That's just stupid, I said. That's just stupid. Hey, 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 Junior. Stop beating on that table. If you jar my icicle loose, oh, I'll pal, have you... I, I'm sorry, pal. Anyway, this editor just kind of looked at me. He didn't even get up. Probably couldn't get up. You probably scared the pants off him, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, that's what happened. The man agreed to buy some Reynolds insulation, and I gave him $40 and left. You gave him $40? To repair his desk. I broke two legs off it. <laughs> Goodbye, now. <laughs> broke two. How's the icicle? Is it okay? Still up there. My, it really is a big one, isn't it, dearie? You said it. Reminds me of the icicle I once seen on Stickle Spickle Works in Peoria. I never heard about that one. You see, Bill Stickle was a pickle tycoon, and Bill Stickle's dill pickles were famous. Yeah, but about the icicle. Well, it started with the pickle down the roof of Stickle Spickle Works, and the Stickle Spickle Packers seen it coming, so they stopped packing pickles and watched the icicle till old Bill Stickle got sore. <laughs> No sense of humor, huh? No, well, it didn't exactly tickle Stickle to see the eye sickle because the output of pickle slowed down to a trickle. <laughs> so Stickle took a sickle and chopped down the eye sickle, and the Packers all went back to packing pickles. Say, <laughs> did he pack bread and butter pickles? Because that's the kind of... Thing. <laughs> Come in, gently. Oh, hello, Ollie. Well, hello, Mrs. Tim McGee. Did you see that big eye sickle out there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we know. And close that door gently. Doc Gamble bet me it'll come loose and fall down by 4 o'clock. Oh, the doctor makes a silly bet. This door stood up there for years. Hmm? You couldn't shove it loose if you tried. Look. Oh, no. No, Ollie. Not the door. The icicle. Dad, rat it if you shake it. Oh, let me look. How is it, sweetheart? 
still up there. Yes, my goodness. That was kind of silly of me. I, I thought you meant the door would fall down. <laughs> That's a good joke on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you got such a fine sense of humor. But the uh, Swensons always did have a good sense of humor, McGee. Back in Sweden, my cousin's school, he, he was quite a cut off. Really? Every night, school would go to see his girl, missus. He'd knock on the front door, and his girl would holler, Who's outside? And he'd holler, Baby, it's school outside. <laughs> He was a very amusing fella. Mm. <laughs> he sounds like sort of a Swedish Fred Nittany. <clears throat> what happened to him, Ollie? Probably too late to do any good. Well, Cousin Cole, he came to this country and fell in love with a girl over here, McGee. Oh. She, she was a college girl. Oh? Skoll asked her to marry him, but she said, not unless you go to Yale. So? Well, to a Swede like Cousin Cole, Yale don't mean college, it means the who's <laughs> So he kicks a policeman, they put him in Yale, and the girl wouldn't even come to see him on Wizard's Day. <laughs> so long, both you guys. Goodbye, Ellie. Thank goodness he went out quiet. My gosh, the way people come in here and try to tear this house down, that icicle never will stay up till 4 o'clock. One more jar is liable to do it. Yeah. See, let's lock the front door and just sit quietly until four. Because... Well, if we lock the door, the next guy would beat it down with a sledgehammer. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. It's starting to freeze outside again. Oh, boy, if this works, that icicle will stay up there till summer. What is it? What's the idea? Well, if I take a hose and connect it to the... I'll, I'll fix it first, and then I'll show you, kiddo. Where's our garden hose? Hose? Why, I think you... Oh, I know. I put it away for the winter right here in the hall closet. Oh, no, don't open that hall closet. <laughs> No, it's still hanging up there. Well, then help me get this dad red moose head off my neck. <laughs> ah, boy, it works. Look up there on the roof, Molly. What is it? I got a hose connected to the laundry tub, see? Out through the basement window and up over the roof. And it's dripping nice and slow on my giant icicle. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah, the thermometer's down to about 20 now, and as fast as that water drips onto the icicle, it freezes solid. Ah, American Ingenuity, Wistful Vista style. <laughs> you betcha. Old Fats Gamble has to get up pretty early in the morning to win a bet for me, kiddo. By George, I'm not... Well, it's too cold out here for me. Come on in the house. No, you go ahead. I'm going to stay out here and guard my icicle, Molly. I only got about 20 minutes more to win my bet. You notice how it's growing? The icicle? Getting bigger? Yeah. Looks the same to me, though. Big, wet, and cold. Mm. Don't catch cold now. Okay. Ah, oh, there goes a good kid. And lucky, too. <laughs> How many women does she know whose husbands have got the brains and ingenuity to figure out a deal like this just to win a $5 bet? For that matter, how many of them would want to? <laughs> but I'm the type of guy... Hi, mister. Oh, Hi. Uh, hello there, Teeny. Pull up a front step and sit down. Okay. <laughs> what you doing, mister? What you doing? Watch it. Well, I'm keeping an eye on that icicle, sis, so it don't fall. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Gee, that must be the biggest icicle in the world, I betcha. Sure. Easy. Mm-hmm. Mister, hmm? what makes icicles? Hmm? What makes them? Hmm? What makes them icicles? <laughs> you mean to tell me you don't know how icicles got invented? Mm-mm. You don't know about young Jack Frost and the beautiful snow princess? No, I don't, mister. Tell it to me, will you? Go on, tell it. Hmm. Well, you just settle back there and rest your snowsuit, sis, and I'll tell you. Oh, boy. A story. <laughs> well, sir, once upon a time... I've heard it. <laughs> you haven't heard this one because I haven't even made it up yet. Now, listen. <laughs> okay. Once upon a time, there was a big snow castle out past Dugan's Lake. And a beautiful young snow princess lived there with her wicked old father, King Brrrr. 
Oh, he sounds mean, mister. He sounds awful mean. He was a very cold character, sister. In fact, he was the only king I ever heard of who had a square heart. Oh? On account of because it was made out of an ice cube, see? Oh. <laughs> now, the little snow princess was in love with a poor but honest young fellow from the village here by the name of Jack Frost. Oh. Jack done odd jobs around town, like painting the leaves red and gold and... Helping the pumpkins to get ripe for Thanksgiving and putting the bite on people who went out without their mittens. He done a lot of artwork on the side, too, like lace designs on window panes and touching up spider webs and all stuff like that there. I love Jack Frost, I betcha. I, I think he's wonderful. Well, the little snow princess loved him, too, but old King Brr said he wasn't going to have his daughter marrying any poverty-struck artist and... He gave poor Jack the cold shoulder. Oh. So the kids decided to elope and get married, and one night off they went. Oh, boy. <laughs> was she pretty, mister? Was she? Hmm? She was lovely, sis. Her hair was full of moonlight. And oh. She was wearing a string of pearls on a cobweb. And oh. Jack had put, <laughs> Jack had put stars in her eyes, and she, she was beautiful. But old King Brr heard about him eloping, and he got his army together and took out after him. And right where this house is now, they caught Jack Frost and his princess. Oh, the poor kids. Old King Brr and his whole army were just about to grab him when all at once it happened. This is the good part now. This is the good part, huh? Yes. Their fairy godmother saw the trouble they were having, and... She stepped in and waved her magic wand and zingle. The wicked king and his whole army turned into icicles. Oh, goody. Then she waved her wand again, and all the icicles turned into little drips. <laughs> Naturally, nobody wants a bunch of little drips hanging around, so they just sort of disappeared. And Jack Frost and his princess lived happily ever after. I'm glad. But just to remind us what happened to wicked old King Brr, the fairy godmother waves her wand every winter. And right over there by the house, you'll see a big icicle, king size. <laughs> king Brr. You like that story? Oh, mm, gee, that, that was just a wonderful story, Mr. McGee. I enjoyed it. <laughs> more interesting than our teacher's theory of what causes icicles, I betcha. Hmm? Our teacher claims that an icicle is just a natural manifestation of nature. Well, uh... Caused by excessive moisture, such as melting snow. Yeah, but... The... Followed by periods of alternate thawing, freeze thus crystallizing the moisture into a solidified pendant shape, or icicle. <laughs> Well, I tell her about old King <laughs> So long, Master. So long. Yeah. Still think that kid's a midget. <laughs> Oh, hey, I almost forgot my own icicle. Ah, oh, it's still hanging there, nice and solid. I thought it ought to be bigger by now, though. That's odd. It's cold out here, but the thing don't seem hey, to Hey, be... McGee, aren't you frozen huh? by now? No, I'm watching that icicle till Doc gets here. Five more minutes, and I win five bucks. See, I wanted to ask you about the holes you've got rigged up to the laundry tub. Yeah? When you turn that thing... Oh, oh hold it, kid. Oh, hold it. Here comes Doc Gamble. Yeah, but, McGee, I want to tell you... Shh. Don't let Doc hear you. How's the icicle, Frost Head? Did it fall yet? <laughs> Listen to him, Molly. He's looking right at it. You can see it hasn't fell. Well, fork over your fin, fish face. You just lost a bet. Take it easy, Grabby. Huh? It's only five minutes till four, and I'll pay off at four o'clock and not sooner. Matter of fact, that thing still looks shaky to me. <laughs> Don't worry. It's stuck up there good. And you're stuck, too. McGee, it is getting smaller, and I'm trying to tell you... Smaller? Oh. Oh, my gosh, it does look like it's gone. 
Look at it. Oh. Steam coming off of it. Hey, what? How can that be? It's way below freezing hey. here. And... Oh, my gosh. It's melting. Look at it. Look at that. It fell. It did fall. I won. Oh, no. That's impossible. How could this happen? Very easily. Huh? I've been trying to tell you when you hooked up the hose to the laundry tub, you turned on the hot water. <laughs> Go fill the tub for me, will you? I want to soak my head. McGee, you'd better call the Gazette office and tell that photographer not to come. Yeah, I guess so. Hand me the phone. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the wistful bist of Gazette, you, Mert? Oh, dear. <laughs> How's every little thing, Myrtle? It is, eh? What say, Mert? Your father. Tossed in the jug, eh? Oh, dear. Arrested, was he? No, he went out to a farm and bought a gallon of apple cider, paid a buck for the cider, and they tossed in the jug. <laughs> How's that, Mert? Oh, okay. Line's out of order. Icicles. <laughs> right, Al. 